veins I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never captain space I won't stop till I hear him say Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. So let's get started. Now here, if you downloaded the code and if you run it, uh, you'll have a screen like this and uh, you should have a project structure like this one. Here you'll have some images as well as a directory, utils, and inside this you'll have this app colors. And if you run it, it would be pretty much like this, okay? So what we'll do first now we'll go ahead and create another folder and uh, here we'll uh, name it screens okay and inside this we'll create a new file and uh, we'll call it home screen okay home screen dot dart just like this now over here we'll go ahead and create uh, a state stateful class for now and we'll call the class name home screen and uh, now I'll hide it over here. We'd go ahead and import the library. Uh, yes, and right after this, um, we'll copy this one and we'll do scaffold over here because we want to build things. So we need body. So over here, we'd do body. And uh, then I'll put my container back, the one I had over here, okay? And for now, I'll just. Uh, uh, leave it like this. I would come back to our folder and in this main.dart file uh, we don't need uh, this section so we we'll just go ahead and delete them and over here we also delete this section which we don't need. Now from here we'll call our home screen class okay so here we'd call it home screen okay all right and we need to import it Let's go ahead and do it. And yeah, let's go ahead and run it. Definitely it's white, okay? All right. Now, the thing we want to do is this one. First, we want to build a home page that will have text and these two buttons over here as well as the background image, okay? So first, we want to show the background image. So we'll put the background image in this container so container itself will have this background image and then on the image we'll have this text over here now they would be there as a child okay or we'll have children like this we'll have three children okay so the first thing we want to do draw this image okay now uh, we'll do it and we also need to do this decoration because inside this decoration we will have box decoration and then we can access the image property okay to so do decoration image and now here we do one more time image and here we do asset image okay all right so here now we we'll mention the image path over here now the image is the one we have over here they are in asset folder so uh, this is the image that we want to use and show over here okay now to the to be able to show the images over here we need to change our pop spec .yml file now over here uh, we do have this assets so we need to unlock it first assets uh, I mean format it like this and then over here we need to s skip this section as well we don't need that and I'll remove this one as well now here I will do assets okay now this assets refer to this folder because we have a slash so whatever is inside this we can would be able to access this one 
So if you change this name over here, you need to change this one as well. And the spacing and format should be exactly like this. Okay, otherwise you might get error. Anyway, so now we'll come back to our uh, home screen class. Now over here, we'll access it by mentioning assets. And the first, the image name was welcome.jpg. Okay, so that's what we have. Over here, we can add this const modifier and they should be gone. Now, let's go ahead and run it and see if we are able to see it or not. Yes, we see that, okay? But this is not covering the whole page or the screen. And for this one, we can set up a property which is called fit property. And here we do boxfit.cover. Now it'll put it as cover, okay? All right, so it might need some dependencies. Okay, so let's go ahead and import them. And uh, now one thing over here, this uh, debug bar, we don't need that, okay? So we'll just do show, um, debug show check mode banner. This is we'll do false, okay? All right, so now it should be gone. All right, and uh, we can ignore this one for now. Okay, so with this, the image is being shown as a background image, right? Okay, cool. So the next thing we want to do is showing this, this, and this. Now, as I said early, that they would be as a children of our container. So over here, we do child, but now they would be in a column widget, okay? So we'll go ahead and declare our column widget over here. Okay, now inside column we'll have children. Okay, so now in the children, this list will put this few things. Okay, all right, one more thing before we go ahead and do that, we can also mention the image width and height. So we do that one double dot uh, max finite, whatever the possible space, we would take that one, and the same is for uh, height. Okay, all right. Now to come over here first we want to show this text and now we want to show this text uh, in a rich text uh, widget okay now with the rich text widget um, you can uh, make a new line very easily and style them a bit differently okay uh, if you just use a text widget you might have to over do a lot of unnecessary code because in the children here we'll have three children this is one and this is one now we are doing this because they're on the top of each other in one column so we'll have three sections but if you don't use a rich text you might have to use four children one two three four but we just want to get done in three so that's why we go ahead and use rich text that's what we do rich text okay now over here, it takes a text property and it takes another widget which is called text span. And now text span inside itself takes another text property. So we'll call it hello. I mean, this is the one, the one we have. Now you can text style it like any other text widget, okay? So that's what we are going to do. Now over here, we would use the color. So you do app colors dot main color. Okay, all right. Now this main color is coming from this file over here, this one. Okay, all right. And if, uh, I'll close this one. I'm not sure what's happening uh, or we can ignore that, okay? All right, so yeah, that's what we have and uh, we'll go ahead and save it and let's save it and see the result. Uh, yes, it is somewhere, I guess, at the top, but we can't say it for now, okay? Uh, but if we want to be able to see it, we can change uh, or add some new properties over here. Um, say main access alignment, main access uh, alignment dot center. So here we go, we see it, all right? So soon we'll change this property. We don't want this kind of property. But anyway, so here we can also set up our font size. So here we do 40 
and font to weight font to weight dot bold okay all right so pretty much like that but 40 is a little too small so we'd go ahead with 60 okay now we want to do this next line so over here right after this uh, well I actually right within this text span inside this inside this one over here we we'll use children okay so text span could take children and the children could be the one you want to style separately okay so this is the line I want to style separately so that's why I'm going to use this one now to be able to quick um, I'll just go ahead and copy this section and uh, I need to put another bracket now the error should be gone now over here we'll say start your beautiful day okay and definitely we don't want so big text and app color should be a uh, small text color and uh, for now we don't want it to be bold okay now let's go ahead and say it we'll say it's right there but we want to put it right below it so here we do a new line and so you would put it right below it okay all right so yeah that's how the rich text is so useful now we want to start from this left side so over here we need to set main access proper uh, cross access alignment so here we do cross access alignment dot start okay now it's too close to this left side so for this reason over here we can set up a padding now here we do const add insets only left we do 20 so it would push them to the right a little bit okay all right now over here we need to go ahead and uh, do this two buttons over here now these two buttons they will have similar uh, properties uh, but just the color background color and text color will be different well for this reason we'll come over here and we'll create a new folder and we'll call it widgets now inside widgets over here we'll make a new file and here we'll call it uh, uh, button widget okay button widget dot dart okay because we want to create reusable uh, button over here so here we'll create a state last class over here and we'll call it button widget okay now this would be our button over here now we would put it inside a container and right over here okay now the container should have uh, a color a background color but now the color would be dynamic which means we have to pass it from somewhere okay so here we do color color okay and it will also have text so here we would do final string text because we need to pass the text and the background color and we also need to pass the color for text so we do text color okay so now we need to add them in our constructor and we also need all of them so we would just go ahead and uh, add the required keyword so after this it looks like this okay now over here this container should have width and height so we do double and max finite and now height over here and this height actually we want to use uh, dynamic height based on different screen size so this is the height we want to use so we do like this and we take 1 40th of it because we have the access to the context so whatever it is it we get it 100 uh, 1 40th of it okay all right but the width doesn't matter okay now over here we also want to have decoration we do box decoration 
now over here we'll have background color for this one so over here we would do um, this color actually what we could do we can change the name actually background color like this it makes more sense over here we'll just simply use background color and uh, you see we do have a bit of radius so we need to apply radius over here so we do border radius border radius sorry border radius dot circular and we would use 40 okay and uh, right after that we need to use our child so here we do child a child definitely should be a text okay all right now for the text itself we need to well for now we we'll just go ahead with the text so whatever the text is given we'll use that one and now we do font size font size we do say 20 and call uh, sorry that should be inside actually style so here we do text style and inside it we'll have font size you do 20 as a font size and the color we can use whatever the color we are we pass around so that should be let's see our actually text color this one okay so with this we are ready to build our button so now we'll come over here and uh, right after red over here we'll call this uh, button widget and as you can see it uh, pops up with default parameters the one we need now over here the background color yeah we would use from app colors dot main color and now in this case the text the first one should be add task and the text color now the color should be app colors dot uh, text I think uh, small text color this one okay so that's what we want to use now we'll restart our app and we see things like this okay all right and uh, okay well in this case we don't want to use the same color we want to use colors dot white for now okay we say this now the it looks a bit weird but we'll change it very soon now the text we want to put inside this container so here we would do uh we'll wrap it around a center widget okay now it is centered uh and i think we can make a bit bigger text okay now it makes more sense and over here we do have this left uh, right padding problem so we can definitely take care of that one but here we do right 20 so now it looks much better now over here these two are too close so we can use a sized box okay now here we do height and for that one media query of context dot size dot height okay this is the one we can use but we want to take say for example one third of it okay so we'll have a bit of distance now oh, let's save it now here you see it opened up and yes we do have a bit of distance if you're not happy with the distance you could do 2.8 okay so as you see it increases the distance all right so for now we'll have this amount of distance over here okay that's great now after this we know that we can if we want to achieve this one we can just go ahead and copy copy the button whatever the button we did over here so we'll just go ahead and simply copy and put it right below it okay now we'll see we have the button over here now this time we'll just change the background color over here so we do colors dot uh, white okay and uh, view all so here we do view view all 
Now over here we do app colors dot uh, small text color. All right, it's looking already better. Now over here we do sized. So here we do height and by twenty. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yes, it's already looking much better. Okay. All right. So while well, with this we are done with working our done with uh, done working with our home page for now. Okay. Well, next we'll see how to go ahead and uh, build this page where it says add task like that. Okay. Um, now we'll go ahead and do a design like this all well, to be able to do that first i'll come to my project directory and over here i'll create a new file and i'll call it add task dart and over here we'll create a stateless class and we'll call it add task okay now we need to import the necessary libra uh, library let's go ahead and do it okay so this is what we have now over here instead of returning a container we want to re return a scaffold because with scaffold it does come with some extra um, design help that uh, you don't need to do on your own anyway so now we'll come over here and do the body and instead body will put the container well now first go ahead and understand the layout definitely we'll have a background image background image would be this complete screen and we can put it inside this container inside the decoration box and then we have to do the layout for this arrow which is this one and this three okay so over here we'll have child and we'll have column and if we have this one in the column first child could be this and then this would be the second child so here I would do children and then I would do column okay and the column will have children I'm sorry over here I need to put the children tag okay now there should be another column okay so once again so this column is for showing this children and the top space we have okay and this column is for holding this three items okay so hopefully it makes sense now before we go ahead and draw the column we have to show this background image so for that one over here we would define first width and height so we do width double dot max finite we do height double dot max finite so with this if we have a background image it would be able to take all the space and that's what we want so over here we do decoration and box decoration and here we do image decoration image image box uh, asset image so our images are inside this assets folder and the image name is add task onejpg let's go ahead and confirm the image name so add task one jpg this is the one that we are going to use okay all right and we might need this const otherwise we'll have this little bit of warning okay all right now we also want the image to fill the whole cover or the screen actually so that's why we do box speed dot cover okay now we'll come over here in our main file now instead of home screen over here we would call add task okay now let's go ahead and save it and uh, this should be this one okay so this is the one that we have worked so far okay now if you remove this one you'll see that it looks strange so this is quite important 
Okay, so now with this, we will go back to our first child, which is also a column for showing this one. Now over here, we do a bit of spacing at the top. So over here, we would do sized box and we do height 60. And then we want to show this icon. So here we do icon button. Okay. All for now on pressed is empty. And for icon itself, we'll use icon icons dot arrow back this one. Now we will use color. Well, you can use any color you want. Well, I want to use the color that we have defined in our app. So here we would do color app colors dot secondary color, which is this one. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and save it and run it and we'll see how it looks. So it's in the middle and uh, we can change this property. So this is horizontal axis, which is our cross axis. So here we do cross axis, cross axis alignment dot start. So, uh, oh, sorry, not over here actually. It should be over here. Okay, yes, here we are. All right, so because this is the main one, okay? So you need to put it for the main one. Now, well, we want to put a little bit to this left because it's too close over here. So that's why here we do left and right. So we do padding. Now here we do const edge insets left 20. Okay. And right 20. All right. Okay, now it might need this const keyword and uh, over here, we'll keep it for now as a const and then the error is gone, or the warning actually. So with this, the first child is done. Now, if we take a look, the this one, so here we need text box, okay? So that's what we want to do. Well, for now, first we'll go ahead and just uh, draw the text box inside it. So first we'll come over here and return a text field. So simply we'll go ahead and do text field. And here we have some properties that we need to enable. Um, so first now, max line one, we just want one line over here. For now, uh, then we'll use a controller and for this one, uh, we need to create a controller. So that's what we do. We'll come over here inside this build method. Here we do text editing controller and we'll name it name controller and we'll get the constructor for this text editing controller. Okay. And we'd be needing two of this. So over here, We'll call it detail controller because we'll have two boxes. Okay. Now we'd come over here. First, we'll pass the name controller to it. Okay. Mm, all right. Let's see. Okay. So we need to remove the const because this this became a variable. All right. Okay. Next, we want to do the decoration. So that's why here we do decoration, and we need to use the property input decoration. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a few properties. So field we'll use as a true, and then we need to use fill color, okay, the background color, okay. So over here we would use app colors dot uh, text holder. This is the color that one I'm going to use. Now over here with this uh, we also need hint text, okay. All right, for now, we'll just say task name, but soon we'll make it like a variable. And after that, over here, we need to use focused border, okay? 
uh, well let's go ahead and take a look at this one so far so well this is what we have and it went up and you can already type anything okay aha uh -huh. all right but that's not actually what we want it looks a bit ugly first thing we want to put it down so over here we would use this main axis alignment properly main axis alignment main axis alignment dot well here we do space between so it would push it to the end okay but this too below it I mean too much to the bottom so over here we can create one empty space here we would use sized box okay and here we would use height now we want a bit of dynamic one and so that's why we'll use media query size that height by three so here we'll have a little bit of height of course you can go ahead and do it with four and five so it doesn't matter we'll change it slowly as we work with this okay we'll see where and how it goes all right uh, anyway so let's go ahead and start it now this is what we have now let's come inside so over here now we want to work with this border right now the border looks very ugly so over here we want to change the border so that's why first we want to change I think when it's called focused things like that and enabled so there are two properties that we can go ahead and use first we do focused border and the constructor it uses is called outline input border now here it takes border radius so that's what we do border radius dot uh, circular and over here we'll use a 30 as border radius and here we would use border side and border side and we'll use a uh, color for this one and colors dot white okay and it also takes width we'll use width equal one uh, let's see what problem we are facing okay so it should be border side okay now let's go ahead and save it okay so when it's focused now as you see it changed all right now the field color is working over here if you take it out you see the color is different but we are using this color which is a bit beautiful okay all right now that's that's a focused one but you see we also have unfocused one okay which is also called I think enabled so we need to copy this one and put it over here and instead of focused we would call it enabled border okay now it changed as well as you can see okay everything else stays the same all right hi there how are you doing all right uh, I think uh, yes mm, th that's pretty much it okay all right now uh, what do we want to do we want to create it like a reusable widget okay because we'll have this one as well so we we'll just go ahead and copy this one actually we'll cut it from here and inside this widget folder we'll create a file we'll call it uh, text field widget.dart okay now this would be a stateless class and we'll call it text field widget so we'll go ahead and uh, import the libraries now instead of returning a container we'll return this text field now here these things few of them should be dynamic like the name controller um, and uh, uh, hint text and the border radius okay these are the things that we want to be dynamic okay so that's why we are getting this error over here now here let's go ahead and create the variables first and then we'll pass it from the color function 
the text editing controller we'll just call it text controller this time okay and we'll also need a text for hint text so we'll call it hint text and over here final double border radius okay so let's go ahead and use them inside okay so we also need the required keyword okay all right we're good now over here instead of name controller we'll replace it with text controller okay and over here we'll replace it with hint text this one and over here we'll replace it with border radius okay and i think everything else stays the same we also need to replace it here okay all right and part of it i think they want it to be const so just to go ahead and uh, add this const uh, word the keyword otherwise you'll get this yellow wiggly lines which looks ugly all right so now if we come over here over here we can just go ahead and simply text uh, field widget this one and we'll use this one not this one because with this one you get the options uh, the one we created now first one we want to pass as name controller okay all right so here we just pass name controller and the text here task name on border radius will pass 30 now let's go ahead and save it you'll see that yes this is the one the one we wanted now first uh, we'll go ahead and simply copy this one okay now over here we would call it task detail okay let's save it and we need a bit of spacing over here so sized box we would do and here we do height equal 20 okay all right but now if you see the design over here we need much bigger space now for this one this max line also this one we want to send it as a parameter okay so here we would do final int now this should be an optional max lines so we'll have a default value for it so here we do this dot max line equal one so because it's optional so that's why we have this one okay now let's see add a const now add a const over here well we can okay so anyway if you run it um it'll still say this one okay so because max line is uh, default so we can just go ahead and simply from here pass max line it's default one is for the first one but over here we can pass a three okay mm. well now it's not taking effect because here we also need to change it now let's go ahead and save it as you see it changed okay now the border radius we can also pass from here so i want to have border radius 10. so yeah or maybe sorry 15 is better yeah so that's what i want to do now here border radius could be also optional okay uh, so here we'll just simply pass 30 as default and we'll remove this one okay now over here we also don't need border radius because it's the default one okay as you see oops uh, looks like we encountered an issue oh uh, let's see what's happening here border radius okay i think we had this const keyword we need to remove that uh okay let's see we have this border radius which is border radius over here and uh, i'm wondering the white ask us to put this null checker which they didn't ask us for here but uh, anyway so for now we'll just go ahead and 
run it and we see yes it works okay uh, what do you want to learn okay now this is happening because I mean you see you type here it goes there because our text controller we didn't change so here it should be detail controller okay now it as you see it a different high there oh sorry now here we do hi what do you want to learn well hi what do you want hi there okay all right so next we want to put this button over here which is this one so we'll just simply go ahead and uh, put a button inside this column over here okay all right so uh, okay right after it here we would use uh, button widget the one we built early we want to go ahead with this one okay now background color app colors dot main color and uh, over here we'll have uh, text add text color we we'll do colors dot white now let's save it and see the result now once again so we can just simply go ahead and use this okay all right so yeah it's, it's looking much better hello everyone assalamu alaikum well in this section we want to draw this page where we'll have this all task would be shown and over here we'll have a background image like this this image and then on it we'll have this button and after that we'll have another row on it or below it actually below this image that would be a row and then we'll have other children below it so there would be column so we'll have a column format so first column the bottom child is this one then this one and then this one so this three okay now over here this child a lot of the items inside would be in row format but here they would be in column format and here this would be a child inside the child there would be another child as this icon okay well now to do that first we'll go ahead and inside our screens folder we'll create a new class and we'll call it all tasks dot dart now over here we'll create a stateless class and we'll call it all tasks now instead of container we'll use scaffold okay now as i said early that we need to have a column format okay then we can put this items on the top of each other so here instead body we'll return a column okay and then we'll have children and inside children first we want to have a container because if we have a container then we can have this one and inside the container as a child we'll have this icon now here we'll use container and we'll use height uh, height and width first we we'll do width now we'll use double dot max finite and then we'll have height okay now the height we want would be uh, based on screen size so we do like this context dot uh, size dot height and we'll divide it by 3.2 so we should be around uh, like uh, around 300 okay now we'll come to this main file over here okay I'll copy the name come over here and instead of add task over here I'll replace it with all task and make sure that we import it now over here we'll show an image soon so let's take a look at the image so this is the image actually we want to display over here but for now we don't have any image yet but we'll go ahead and run it and see how it looks now here we are and uh, it's all empty because there is no content here this is over here from material app we are merely calling this one without any content now we could do content over here so first we do decoration and then box decoration and then we do image okay now here we do image 
and uh, decoration image and then image and uh, asset image okay now here my image is there in assets folder and then the name is header dot header one dot jpj now we can see it immediately we will set up another property which is called a fit property here we do box fit dot cover okay so because of this it will sit there as a cover uh, let's see okay I need to move it inside the decoration I'm sorry inside this okay all right now let's save it yes it's working and I think we need a const operate const modifier then it'd be gone all right so so far so good and next we want to draw an icon okay so now that we put the icon as a child and we use icon icons dot arrow back so this one the first one okay now we'll go ahead and use it and we see it here okay well for now uh, we also want to change the color so we do color you can use any color I would use app colors dot secondary color okay let's go ahead and see well it's like this now we want to put this one at the top like this so here we do like this okay um, we would use alignment property and we would use alignment dot top left okay so now it went too much to the left and top now we can take care of this one by here adding padding so you do const add inches only now over here we would do left uh, 20 and uh, top say 60 all right cool so with this we are already looking good now because you here you see this white part is part of this image the background is a little bit gray now here for scaffold we can use the background color and we would use colors dot white okay and which looks very good all right cool so now we are done with this part okay now next we'll see how to go ahead and draw this section okay well to do this one to draw this section we'll collapse this one first over here and then we'll use another container okay now the reason we are going to use a container because we want to have padding on the left and on the right okay otherwise we wouldn't need this anyway so over here what we'll do we'll first have a child over here now uh, we'll have a row because we want to put these things in a row then we'll have children okay now well now this two things we want to draw together first okay well just go ahead and let's draw them and see how they look so over here we'll have this uh, icon okay so we do icon icons dot uh, home okay and then we want to use a color for this so we use app colors dot uh, secondary color and then we want to use a sized box because we want to create a bit of distance well this part is interesting because uh, here we need this icon and it's a background color as well okay for this reason actually i'll go ahead with the container one more time and here we'll have width say 25 uh height say 25 and then we'll have decoration and box decoration and border radius and we already know how to do these things so here we'll have 12.5 that's the border radius and we'll also use a color and colors dot black okay now let's go ahead and save it and see the result uh, uh, we should take a look how things are going yes like this okay I think uh, we need 10 is okay we are good and we don't want black 50 54 we just want black okay now inside it we can have a child and icon icons dot add okay and the color should be white okay so we do colors dot white okay now let's save it yes we see it already there 
and uh, we can adjust the size it's 24 now but we can use the 20. now as i said earlier they're too much to the left so over here for this reason the big container which is this one over here we'll use uh say padding okay so const agencies only we'll use left 20 and right 20 in future we'll have stops on the right okay they're done okay so next we want to go ahead and draw this one now the problem would be if i continue to go ahead and draw this um, well let's go ahead and see i think we can use over here uh expanded container and we'll see how things go okay all right so now here we want to draw this calendar over here okay so for this one i'll just copy this one actually in fact i can copy all of this and put it there and we'll see things uh, like this okay so that's being repeated and then we also have a number so which is a text so here for now we'll use a two and uh, i think we want a bit of uh, well we do have this one okay great and then we we'll use style text style and here font size say 20 yes and the color colors of course dot secondary color okay all right now we want to push this to to the right side and for this one uh, let's see go ahead over here and try to draw expanded widget okay now over here we'll use empty container so so it's working so in that case actually i need to put it right after it okay so perfect all right but i think instead of home actually we want to use calendar okay let's go ahead and save it yeah pretty much like that okay so this section is done while so this expanded widget helped us and push them to the left and right so created this empty space anyway so now we need to go ahead and draw this section over here okay well now over here this should be in a list and uh, this should also be reusable so first we need to go ahead and create reusable widgets over here we'll create stateless reusable widgets and we'll call them uh, let's say task widget okay stateless widget and the task widget okay now over here we need the container and let's import the dependencies okay so once again we'll have uh width we do with uh, double dot max finite okay and we also want to use a height over here and once again this kind of height we want to use dynamically so we would use a context and here i would take 1 40th of them and uh, over here we also want to use decoration and we would do box decoration and then we'll have color now here for the color itself uh, let's see color o x f f e d f o f8 so this is the color we want to use and uh, we can also use border radius so we do border radius dot circular uh maybe we'll have a very little border even though it doesn't have but i think we should have a little bit border so i'm changing the design on the fly all right and then we also need a child over here but the child should be as a part of text so here we would use the text now the text should be given from here right so we'd pass the different text so we do string text okay so now here we'll just simply write text now for this one as well as we can also use uh, 
style so you do text style and font size 20 and then color now the color we can pass down whatever the color we want to give it so over here let's make it uh, a variable so here we do color color okay so color could be optional okay so if we don't provide any color then we'll use a default value okay just let's go with like this because providing a default value is also annoying so we'll just stick to this one like this now over here we will have color okay all right so with this pretty much we are done over here so all you need to do go ahead come over here and try to use that okay now that should be below this container so we have to create a new container but before we go ahead and create a new container let's go ahead and create a list first okay list my data over here and uh, over here for now we want to put this in the list in future we'll get them from database or from server okay so the first one is a try harder and the second one is a try smarter that's all okay now here we'll have list view builder that's what we do list view list view dot builder okay now once again we have seen it many times so item builder takes a context and index but context could be empty though it doesn't really matter all right now within it we need to return something okay and it will return a container uh, Well, the reason we want to return container because we want to use a padding or margin well in this case i think we'll stick to margin okay now within it we'll have a child and inside the child we'll use the text widget the one we just created over there okay now over here first we need to send a text and the text would be the first element or from over here okay so based on this index so we'll grab this list and we'll put it over here and then we we'll do index so whatever the text comes from here we'll use that one let's go ahead and use the other parameter okay now over here for color we'll use colors dot blue gray this one all right okay so now what we'll, so we'll see something let's go ahead and save it and see how things are okay and we do have this problem because list view builder doesn't have any uh unbounded height things like that i mean it has unbounded height but it needs a height so how to solve this issue so in this case you can just wrap it around another widget which is called flexible okay so here we do flexible okay all right now let's see what else we have okay now we do have this other arrow that's because we are not defining the range over here okay so we need to do item count and here it would be my data dot length okay now that arrow should be gone now with list view builder um, what happens uh, if you don't give it any certain height then it tries to take all the space and that's when the problem happens so in that case you can just simply wrap it around list, list view builder and then the problem should be solved okay anyway so now we'll come over here and we we want to put it in the middle okay so we would come over here the text we want to center inside uh, this container now they are centered and over here you can use uh, margin okay so we do const edge insets only and the left 20 right 20 so you see it's already looking better and we can also use the bottom 10 okay so now we have this space okay so that's how it looks much better now okay yeah but of course yet they are not uh, clickable so soon we'll see how to make them clickable or dismissible okay we'll see how to make our list dismissible and uh, take a look first we want to achieve this kind of result where we can slide left and right with this beautiful icons okay so that's what we want to do 
and then we'll also see how to dismiss them all right okay that's what we want to see well to be able to do that first you need to wrap around your each of the list in the list view using a dismissible widget so each container here a container is responsible for showing each of the list in the list view right so here I'll wrap it around using a container uh, sorry using a widget which is called dismissible all right and uh, it takes a key over here we need to pass object key and inside it takes a parameter which should be index this one you should pass down to it okay now we'll take a look at our app over here and we'll run it and if we go we'll see that it's already dismissible it's as simple as that one okay let's run it and now of course you can dismiss it in either direction it doesn't really matter okay now first thing we want to do as I said that we want to be able to do like this okay yeah and we want to have option where we can choose what to do like here I want to add it and here I want to delete okay all right so before we go ahead and do that we need to take a look and other two properties that it takes one is on dismissed uh, and it takes uh, an anonymous function and here it takes an object of dismissible um, dismiss let's see dismiss direction and here we create an object of this dismiss direction okay all right let's see change to dismiss direction okay now we will also have another property it's a confirm dismiss okay now it takes pretty much same as this one and over here we'll return okay now here it wants you to return a uh, bool so here for now we'll return false and it it would return a future bool okay so that's why we need to put here a sync okay all right now let's go ahead and rerun it uh, let's see okay we'll restart our app okay now it's good now if you try to do this you see you can't because here we set the property to false and of course if you try to go ahead and print stuff here you can print confirming okay and over here we'll print uh, after dismiss okay all right so now let's see the log over here so whatever you do it says that confirming okay but if we over here return true what it will do it will first print this one and then it will print this one so what happens here confirm deletes it first if the condition is true and then it comes over here so it means that first when you want to delete you can before deleting you can do some uh, operations or whatever the thing you need and then when it gets deleted after that you can do some other operations like calling a function callback function things like that okay let's save it now you see I delete it and it works so confirming and after dismiss okay it doesn't matter how you dismiss it you always see the same result okay so that's beautiful now with this it would help us to achieve a result like this okay so as we slide we can first get stuck over here okay and based on button click we will decide what to do whether edit or view or like this okay so that's why these two methods are so important well now there are another two properties that we can go ahead and implement and which is called over here let's take a look uh, background and secondary background actually they refers to this icon over here like from the left side shows up one this this one and from the right side shows up another one okay so these are the things it's talking about so that's what we do right now and to, be, to to do that first we need to come over here and we'll define a widget to return okay all right 
So here we'll create a widget and we'd say left edit icon. Now here we do container because the container would return us a widget because container itself is a widget. Okay, now here we do margin. Now here const edge insects only. And we would do bottom 10. Now here we here we do color. Color we'll use this color. And then we want to use a child. And child for now we would use icon and uh, icons dot uh, let's see which one I think we can use an icon called edit this one all right and for itself we'll use uh, a color and we will use white color okay and we also want to take care of the alignment issue so here we'll use uh, alignment dot center left okay this one now let's put uh, const keyword modifier otherwise we see these wiggles and which I hate uh, I believe you hate them as well okay so now over here we would use uh, let's see background and here we'd say left editing icon okay all right now let's go ahead and save it and let's look at our simulator uh, well, no, this error, just to go ahead and restart it, I think it should be gone, okay? Now, if you do that, you see it showed up, okay? And this is what actually we wanted to implement, okay? And it's working. And speaking of this one, I think we should go ahead to our task widget and border radius for now is zero, which looks and makes it much better looking, okay? All right, so that is fine. And uh, let's see, should we take care of this color? I think we can use opacity 0.5, okay? Yeah, now I think, yeah, it, it's better. Now you see on the left and right, they have the same uh, background or they are coming out left and right section so for left one should be for editing and right one should be for deleting okay so that's what we want to do for right one we'll just go ahead simply copy this one and then we'll put it here and uh, we'd say right here we'd say right delete icon right delete icon and margin stays the same and well color for this one simply we do colors that red okay red accent is better and uh, icon should be delete icon okay and the color itself should be white and alignment uh, let's see center right instead of left okay R I G H T right. Okay, now over here, this one, this property is called secondary background property, right delete icon. Okay, now let's save it. Okay, now let's try this one. Yes. Okay, so yeah, it's looking better. All right, well, now over here, if you want to delete, go ahead and delete. Okay. Now, if you want to do like this, it also deletes. So this is the condition we want to check. We, we don't want to delete in every direction. In this direction, we need to pop up an option. And over here, we'll just for now go ahead and delete, okay? So next, we'll see how to restrain them from deleting in either way, okay? Well, we know that this section is responsible for deleting and especially if we set the flag to true okay so now we can overcome this one so over here first uh, let's uh, do a conditional check we'll remove this one first okay now here based on this we can check we can do a conditional check so here we do if direction because actually direction knows which direction we are sliding it okay so here we do dismiss direction start to end well now start to end refers to this one okay so this is the start and it goes like that okay yeah so start to end so it means left to right if it is left to right we'll return false okay 
we don't want to delete anything and otherwise we'll return true okay return true okay and it should work as you see it doesn't delete right if you do this one yes it's delete so it only gets deleted if the condition is true somehow okay so with this from left to right it falls to this one and if we do right to left it falls to this category or this condition and then it returns okay and it returns true now over here we can set up another condition we you just delay a little bit simulating delay let's do it so over here right now instead of returning true directly we can return future dot delayed okay now over here it takes a duration uh, so here we do duration duration and seconds say one and then it also takes a function okay now over here we can just simply go ahead and return this like this uh, because we don't have much thing to do so we can just simply go ahead and return an arrow function so arrow function would be like this so we'd take this condition okay and now over here instead of start to end it should be I think uh, end to start okay the opposite direction end to start okay now uh, it may look like a little over complicated let me tell you what's happening here we know that when we do this one left to right it falls to this condition the opposite definitely falls to this condition right because we just only have one else now we are delaying one second and then we call this function now this function should uh, this function is supposed to return right this function is supposed to return over here and because this condition is always true when we drag from right to left so here it returns true okay so that's how it would it work here now let's go ahead and run it or we'll run from the beginning one more time yes we can't delete yes one second later we can delete okay now we are delaying one second because in future we want to simulate an animation okay so that's why we are doing it right now well that's great next we'll see how to pop up with option when you do like this okay all right to be able to do that we want to pop up an option from the bottom okay well for this one over here we want to use a special widget which is called show model bottom shift okay this is the one that we want to use and it takes few properties first one is the context context and second one is the builder now for builder itself we'll use uh, we'll pass nothing because there's nothing that we can use from builder directly okay mm, let's see i think uh, over here we need to put return because it's uh one let's see what is it function or widget doesn't matter more like it's a function and it takes a context and uh, over here it takes a builder but builder itself takes a function now here we'll do return okay now for now we'll just go ahead and simply return a container and uh, we'll see that we can right away use it doing doing test okay now let's save it now if we do like this we see that it showed up and we see it over here so it means it's already working okay all right now there are other properties that we can go ahead and set up so it has you see it has a different kind of color over here it does have kind of uh, dark gray and over here for the content itself it has a white color okay so now we can go ahead and play with those two properties well one is called barrier color another is called transparent color okay now we'll, uh, sorry barrier color and uh, background color okay so here we'd set them both to transparent colors dot uh, transparent and uh, barrier color okay let's go ahead and check the barrier color we'll set it to red 
So here, uh, let's start one more time. So as you see, this is the barrier color and uh, I can do background color yellow. Mm, sorry. Okay, so background color is the content color, content background and rest of the color is barrier color. But we want to set them to transparent for both of them because we want to see what's in the background of our app, okay? That's why we'll set them to background. Let's uh, try it. Yes, so now we, we can see the background, right? Yeah, so that's why it's uh, interesting. Well, for the content itself, we can define a height. So let's go ahead and define a height and we'll see the height, let's say 500 and uh, let's uh, for background color one more time use the yellow and the C okay all right let's restart yes so content takes 500 pixels okay so for now, we might go ahead with 500, 600. It doesn't really matter. You can go, 100, go ahead with 600 uh, or 550. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, restart it. Yeah, like that, okay? So yes, so it's up to you how much you go ahead. But anyway, uh, now we, we need to have a specific size for the background content. So this container gives the background content a specific size. Otherwise, it would be very small. Otherwise, it would just take the, con the content size. But we don't want content size. We want to container size. And in the container itself, we'll put some, uh, put our information, the information we want. Okay. All right. Now over here, we want to... Uh, do uh, over here decoration and box decoration and we'll also have child okay now for the child itself we want to have a column why like this we want to have this two sections so they should be in column format okay so first we'll go ahead and sh do the child so we do column and the children okay now first one over here should be one of the two options the one we have view and edit okay all right so for this two we can simply go ahead and use the button that uh, we have created early so if you see inside the widget we have button widget okay so these are the two things that we can go ahead and use so over here we we'll do like this button widget okay now it does take a background color now over here you see so we'll have a background color over here so we we'll do app colors dot main color now the text itself will use uh, view and uh, text color we'll use uh, white so we do colors dot white okay now we'll go ahead and copy it sorry so i copy it like this and then i'll put a comma okay right now over here we would do edit and background color it would also stay white okay now i'll hide this one now let's go ahead and start it now let's see how it looks yes so this is what we have okay well now they're in the center at the top uh, because it's the columns default property and we want to use uh, main axis alignment so we do main axis alignment dot center okay mm, let's try now we see they're in the center okay perfect and we can also create a bit of space over here. So size box uh, height say 20. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's just like that. Now the problem is it's too much close to the left and right side. So for this one, this column itself, we'll wrap it around another widget and uh, we'll call it uh, padding. 
using padding widget. Now here we'll use padding and const agent sets only. So here we'll use left 20 and right 20. Okay, and hopefully it would work. So let's do it. Yes, so it looks much more, much more beautiful. Now over here, uh, we want to do a decoration because we don't want this kind of uh, sharp background. We want a little curved background. So over here, that's why we do decoration and box decoration. And here we do border radius, border radius, okay? Now we do only, but in this case, only top left and the top right, okay? Here we do or we do radius, sorry, radius dot uh, circular, and here we use 20 and the top left radius. Here we would use uh, circular 20. Okay, and I think we need the const modifier. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, save it, run it. And uh, what's happening here? Okay, let's restart it. Okay, it should be the transparent color problem. So here we want to do transparent. Let's see. Okay. Well, now it's good because it was the outside border, but of course inside it's gone. But over here, we can just simply set a color and see uh, yellow. So the background should be coming from the container itself, not the outside one, because we can't decorate the outside container background color or outside background color, either it's transparent or a solid color. But the one inside container, we can always take care of that one. Oh, let's see, uh, sorry. Yeah, so you see here is the background, okay? Well, that's working. Now, of course, we don't want yellow. So over here, we want uh, a const color. So here we do OX FF 2E3253. So let's save it. Yeah, so this is the one we wanted, but we want it with transparency, so with opacity 0 0.4, okay? And then we can't use the const, I guess. And nor did we here, yeah. Uh, well, over here might be okay. And over here, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, so it's looking much better now because we want to see the transparent background. Okay, perfect. So with this, it's working. Now we'll come back to our homepage over here. And uh, next, first we'll do welcome page. Welcome, welcome screen, I think. Let's see, oh, what is it, home screen, okay. All right, so let's restart. Mm, otherwise it'd be messy so this is what we have now okay great now what do we want to do we want to click on this and go there come back click on this go there and come back so that's what we want to do so for this one right now we'll go to home page over here control B sorry uh, come on B yes this is our home page now we're here Let's go ahead and uh, over here, um, we want to set up, we want to make this button clickable, these two buttons, okay? Now for this one, what we'll do, we'll come to this uh, uh, pub spec YML and uh, over here we'll download a package and for now, I'll use GetX package, okay? All right. Now I'll do this tutorial both in GetX and Provider. Well, first two part would be using GetX, and then the last part we'll see how to convert this package or this app to Provider app instead of GetX. But GetX is also very useful because a lot of you have asked me how to use a Provider. I'll start with GetX, and at the end I'll show you how to. Uh, do the state management using provider instead of getx 
Okay, once again, I'm not comparing any of them. Personally, I love both. Most probably, I love GetX more. But a lot of our fans want to learn using provider. So the state management part, I'll use provider at the end. But first, I'll still use GetX. So we're learning more in one tutorial, okay? Now I'll go ahead and import it. And uh, sorry, I mean install the package. And then I'll come to our home page, home screen over here. And first we need to import the GetX library package. So let's go ahead and import it. And once that is done, uh, now over here, we'll wrap it uh, around uh, a widget. Okay, and this time we'll wrap it around ink, ink while widget. Now over here it is on tap property. Okay, now here would do get get the two. Okay, get the two, and we want to view all. So here we want to go to uh, all tasks. Okay, all right. And here we also want to use a transition. We want to do basic animation transition dot fade. All right and here we want to mention duration so sorry so second one one millisecond okay so that's what we want to do uh, let's see okay let's restart everything okay and let's come over here mm, let's see how it goes view all and we have error that's because uh, we are using getx routing if you want to get x routing your material app should be wrapped around uh, getx using get material okay so here you should use get okay all right now let's restart it the error should be gone okay now let's click on this yes beautiful that's what we see okay all right, but now here we don't have this button. So what we want to do, we want to go ahead and use the back button for all tasks over here. Uh, so let's see where they are. It should be here, mm, the icon, okay? So this icon, I want to cut it and here I would do inkwell, okay? And child, this one and uh, on press or on tap here we would do get dot back okay all we need to do get the library okay and this is where actually get it shine it does have very convenient routing system let's go ahead and do it beautiful it goes back I love this transition it's collapse slowly goes up slowly isn't it beautiful okay and next we do it for add task okay so let's once again come to our home screen over here and uh, this one we'll wrap it around another widget mm, so this is inkwell once again Okay, now here we do on tap. Here also once again get the two. Now I'm using routing like this. At the end of this tutorial, we'll move all of them to a separate file. So here we want to do a task. Let's say this one. Okay, now here uh, once again transition, I would use animation transition dot uh, let's see zoom this one and duration duration seconds one okay all right so let's restart it let's make sure we don't have any error now here at task yes okay now that's too slow so we can do 0 0.5 or milliseconds I think yeah milliseconds uh, 500 okay now it should work now click on this yes now we need to click on this button which is in add task 
So add task over here, we should have an icon. Okay, this one side. So I'll use 40 and let's see. Yes, it's better. Now over here on pressed event is empty. So we need to come to this section and import it. Uh, and over here, I would do get dot back. Okay, that's as simple as this one. Now let's go ahead and click on this. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Well, now so far we are doing good. Next, we'll see how to add task and submit it to the backend. That means that in next section, we'll focus on Golang part. Okay. For definitely is about uh, Golang, but you should go ahead and install Golang. And how to go ahead and install Golang on your machine? You can check out the link uh, below in this video description. I have a previous tutorial where I showed you step by step how to install uh, Go on your machine. Okay. And once you are done with this, uh, uh, you should use your favorite editor. And for this one, actually, I'm going to use uh, VS Code. Okay. Because over here on Android Studio, I'll run um, Flutter. And on VS Code, I'll run Golang. Okay. I mean, I'll use that as an editor. Okay. All right. So if you have installed Golang the way I described in the video, which is my other tutorial, you should have a library like that. You should have a folder where you will have bin, packages, and source. In general, inside the source folder, we'll write our source code. Okay. So over here, I'll create a new file and I'll call it main.go. All right. Now, well, this few things, well, if you don't have this one yet, don't worry. And this one, I'm going to do it. Okay. I don't need this one now. It is from the previous tutorial. So if you just followed along with me, you'll have these three folders and then this one, not this one yet. Uh, I'll show you when it's generated and why. Okay. But for now you will not have this one. Okay. So this is our main main.go and this is the one that we'll use to write our code. Okay. So first one, we need to import a package. So here the package is main. Okay. All right. So this is the main package. That's pretty much all go application use. And after that, we need to import another, I think they call it library. Okay. So here we would use T this one, and this one would be using for printing log on the terminals. Okay. So that's why we need this. Well, now we have this error because uh, we imported it and we didn't use it. And that's why in Go, if you import a library and if you don't use that it gets you error but this error will be gone soon so here i'll create a function using func keyword and we'll call it main and inside of main we'll simply just go ahead and print a log so you do fmt dot print this one okay and here we'd say hello flutter boys okay all right now you see the error has gone now i'll save it Okay. Well, after saving it over here in the terminal, you should come inside the source folder. And then over here, you'd simply just do go run main.go. All right. And uh, in the terminal, we see hello, Flutter boy. So it means that our application is up and running. Okay. All right. So with this, we are, uh, we are verifying that our uh, go server is also working at the same time. Okay. Well, now here in our application, we want to add a task and view the task, right? So that's what we want. We want to add task and view task here, right? And we'll, I mean, we'll see the list of tasks in future. We'll click on them and go and view them. But first we want to create some task default in our application, just like this. We have two tasks. Of course, they're hard coded in the um, Flutter app itself. But now we'll create some tasks in, in Golang, like in the database, and then I will we'll show it over here. Okay. All right. Well, to be able to do that, first, we need to create a struct. Okay. Because struct is more like a class in Golang. 
So because if we have a struct, that would be like a class, and then our class will have some methods and properties. Mostly for Golang, they are properties. Okay, so to describe uh, or create a struct in Golang, in general, you would go first to the type and your struct name. Our struct name is tasks, and this is a struct. So struct is once again more like a class. Okay, if you are coming from C or C++, you know what is struct. Okay. So just like in a class will have um, uh, properties like field, over here you would do the same thing, okay? Now here we would have ID, okay? Now ID in our case would do string, string type. Now this ID would be our task ID in future, okay? So that's what we are going to do. So string, now here this would be as JSON because we want to save them and decode them okay and uh, some of the information we'll get from flatter and save here so that's why we, when we are sending information from uh, flutter app to server we need to send json data and then when we send from flat uh, uh, golang or from server to flutter we also need to send json data right so that's why we need json over here so here we do json and uh, I think ID, yeah, just like this, okay? So that's how you create a struct and field. And because our data would be exchanged through exchange through server, so our data also has to be JSON type, okay? So string and JSON at the same time. So here um, we'll have, I think we'll call it task name over here, okay? So here we'd say task name and it should be string task name, all right? And over here we do task detail, okay? And just like this. Now, this things right now, VS Code is auto-generating, so it depends on some of the plugins that you use, okay? All right, the last one we want to do is date, and uh, because we want to save when a certain task has been created, okay? Yeah, and I'll skip this one. Okay, all right. Now over here, we want to create an instance list of tasks. So we need to create empty variable first. So here we do var tasks, tasks, okay? All right, so now this would be a list or like an array of tasks. So that means that over here, I can insert object like this, okay? So that also means that I have to go ahead and create object and put in this list, okay, or in this array. To do that, first I'll go ahead and create a method. And uh, over here I'll use the keyword func and I'll call it all tasks, okay? Now here I'll return. Now here I would create a task. Now this task uh, would be a local variable, okay? And as we create the variable, we'll also assign a value. So that's why here you don't need the ver keyword. Like here we have, here we have ver keyword, but here we don't need because we are creating and assigning. In that case, we can skip the var keyword, okay? All right, so now here we do tasks, okay? Now here we need to fill up the field. So here we do say, ID because we have ID over here, right? So you need to assign value to it. ID first one just would do one and then we do task name. Here um, new projects and uh, after that over here we do task detail. Uh, you must lead the project and finish it okay and then here we'll have date okay so simply date uh, all right for now we'll have hard-coded date say so zero one two two all right so that's the first task that we created I think you shouldn't have empty space let's see well, once again, if you declared one, you have to use it. So that's why you get this error. Now, to be able to use it, we'd come down here. Okay, let me uh, collapse the uh, window. 
Now, to be able to use it, uh, we can insert this task, the one we created over here, into this. Okay, so over here, just I will simply do tasks, this one, which refer to this array or list. Now, over here, I will use a keyword called append. Okay, and that's it. Now the error is gone. So, what did it do? It would so take this task and put here and append to it. Okay, and then once again assign to it. And that's how you go ahead and use that. Okay, now, well, I think we are doing good. And right now, we can go ahead and print them. Now, here, simply what I'll do. I'll go ahead and do fmt print run your tasks are yeah we'll just go ahead and simply print this one now before we need to go ahead and print we need to call this function so here we'll go ahead and uh, sorry call this all tasks we do all tasks okay now let's save it and as we are saving we don't have any error so it means the compile should work so let's go ahead and run it okay now here you see id1 and your uh, project detail i think that sorry now yeah, is it I just, just switch to a different terminal i'm sorry about that let's see Run it one more time Oops, uh, SRC, let's see. Okay, yeah. So what happened over here, ID1, which is this one, project name, and project detail, and date. Now, we, I think we are able to say it as this. That means that uh, our app is backend is working so far. Okay, All right. So with this, we are able to create one task. So let's go ahead and create more task. For this one, we'll just simply go ahead and copy this and put it right here. And instead of task, we'll say task one. And over here, we'll use that. Okay, and the arrow should be gone. And we'll use ID two. Power project. Okay. So here we say we need to hire more staffs before the deadline. Okay, let's save it. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, now here we see this is the second one, this is the first one. Okay, well, that means so far it's working. Okay. Now, before, of course, we go ahead and touch our Flutter app. I mean, we show stuff in the Flutter app. First, we need to test it locally. Before we go ahead and test it locally, I mean, using Postman, we also need to set up router, okay? All right, to be able to do that, you need to install a library. That's called Gorilla Mask. Now, over here, actually, um, I already have it, this one, okay? Now, if you want to install it on your side, you should go ahead to their GitHub account, GitHub page, and just go ahead and copy this one. And uh, actually, that's what I'll do with you, same, okay? So I'll come over here, I'll delete it first uh, so that we know what, what we are doing. So I'll delete it, okay, great. Now I, I'm in this uh, source folder and I'll hit this one. And before I hit it, actually, I want to see what's happening. So I can mention another uh, argument, which is minus V for verbals. So I will hit enter and it says it's downloading and it may take a couple of minutes to much longer time, depending on your internet speed. Okay. Okay. It's done. And if it's done, uh, most probably you need to boot up your server. I mean, in this case, you need to boot up the whole uh, VS code. Let's go ahead and cancel it and uh, restart it okay now here i am so i would go into my uh, source folder okay and i'll close that and uh, yes and i'll close that one as well now over here we need to import a few other packages one is log and here we do net 
dot http and now after that we'll use the import gorilla mask uh, github github.com gorilla mask okay now we have this error because we need to use them otherwise we'll still have this error okay now to be able to use that uh, first go ahead and create a method over here so over here we'd use a method and we'll call it handle routes okay now over here um, for handling our routes uh, using gorilla mask which is this one we'll create a route object from mask okay so we'll call it router and here um, we'll say it like say mask dot uh, new router okay and then we need to use it otherwise we'll have an error but how can we use it we use the router when we boot up the server okay i mean this router object to boot up the server you need to use log.fatal which is this one okay and uh, inside it we would use http listen and serve okay so that's where they're coming from log and http okay all right now here inside it you can mention your server port in our in my case i'll use 8082 you can use 8081 800 8080 whatever server is available whatever port is available and after that you need to pass this route object and with this our all of our errors are gone let's go ahead and save it and now we we'll do go run main.go to make sure that there are no errors okay all right so it means there are no errors because the terminal returned with the message okay all right now now we need to go ahead and call this one okay so i'll go and call this and i will save it and one more time i'll run and we'll see this time the server will be running and it wouldn't end okay so you see server is running all right so that's how it it goes ahead and run all right i think uh here I'll do i would cancel it first and i would uh put it at the end okay so we see the log messages early and now here i'd run it i'll do clear first and run like this okay cool all right uh so with this our server is up and running okay now this is the time we go ahead and create some route now to be, to be able to create a route we can use this router object we do router dot handle func. Now handle func is a function from this object. Okay, in general, it refers to the home page. Okay, now here we do home page, home page, and home page is a get method. So here we do method. I think uh, method get this one. Okay, now this is error because we need to create the related home page function so here we do func home page now over here simply we just do fnt print one i'm home page okay all right now the error should be gone let's see okay so here we also need to pass another object uh, this one okay because uh, it not just call the home page at the same time you should pass this too okay if you mention over here they get passed automatically okay all right so this should be our home page because of the slash and this is a get method and for now we're just printing a log okay now i'll save it and after that i'll cancel it over here and i'll run it okay all right and as usual we'll see our messages but we don't see this one now this is more like our home page router if you're coming from laravel or node.js you'll see that router is written like this in laravel it goes with router semi double colon and then your type of router like get router or post router in this case you add it to the end then you mention your route name and related function okay that's what exactly we have in go now we can test that whether our 
server is working, whether this route is working or not. So for that one, you'd open up Postman. And over here, I'll create a new tab. And here, I would do 127.0.0.1. Uh, I think that's dot. And then I would mention the port name. And that's it. So let's see what it shows us. OK. All right. Well, we don't see anything over here, but let's see. Come over here. We see that I'm home page. OK, so it's printing to the server because this is supposed to print to the server, not to the postman. But you only say it if you have a get request from postman, which means that we are browsing this application, this application from a web browser or an application any kind of mobile. So we are able to visit our server from a mobile phone. OK. Well, so this this part is so far great. Now, with the, saying with this, after that, we can go ahead and copy and create more routes. All right. Now, here, first one, I'll call it get tasks, which will get get me all the tasks. Next one, I would call it uh, get task. So it should be get task. Now, here I'll call it create task, and here I would call it delete task. Um, well, I think it's simply just to go ahead and uh, call them create. Now for deleting, we want delete based on ID. So that would be dynamic. And we also want to update. So that should be based on ID as well. Now here, of course, we need to change the name. So this time we'll say get tasks. get task and here we'll just simply create task we'll copy this paste it paste it now here it should be delete task and here it should be um, update task okay now here these three methods are all get method this one would be a post method and then this should be a delete method and this should be a put method okay now of course we don't have the related method so that's why we are getting error now we'll go ahead and paste them a few times over here okay now with this uh, this is we'll call get tasks okay now the error is gone here get task here we'd say create task now we'll copy this one here would say delete task and I think we can copy this one and put it over here and we'll call it update tasks okay all right now let's save it we'll close our server and run it with this it'll compile and run okay Cool. So now our server is working, and once again, you don't see I am homepage because we didn't hit any route. So if I go ahead and post it on, get make a get request from Postman, and here we'll see that I am homepage. Okay, great. So next we'll see how to retrieve all the routes. Sorry, all the tasks. The one we created over here. All this task we created over here, uh, we'll access them using uh, our Postman from here. So that means that we have we we will hit our endpoint, which is this one, and then we'll process the data and we'll return a JSON response to the server. So the server would be able to print that. I'll save it and uh, now we'll create a get task this one. So we want to get all the tasks and actually that's pretty much easy for us. All we need to do is send a JSON response and the response would have this uh, variable which we created early. This tasks. Okay. Yeah. So I'll collapse this one first and now I'm over here dot set. Yeah, this one. Okay. Now, once that is ready, now we need to, with this, our header has been set up. And after that, we just send the books. 
So here we do JSON dot uh, new encoder encode and task. So that's how you send header uh, JSON response back to the server, okay, or back to the I see application, not really server. Now, of course, there is an error because we don't have any JSON file or packages. So for this reason, we can just import it here. Here we do encoding JSON. Okay, this one. And after this, the error should be gone. Let's save it. Now over here, I will run it. Okay, make sure that it's running. Yes, it's running. Now in Postman, over here, I'll call now here the route is get tasks okay get tasks this one okay now let's save it and uh, let's check the body so make sure that you set it to json and, uh, from the server and in json format so that's great next we'll see how to uh, get just one response. I mean one JSON response for one task. So that's what we want to do Well, do remember that in general if you're working with a Laravel or other kind of framework here You need to return but with Golang you don't need to use the return keyword. Okay now over here first we'll create a variable and uh, we'll call it uh, say task ID okay now over here we want to get the ID from mask so mask dot bars now over here it takes a parameter R okay so what it will do let me tell you what's happening so over here we would get one task based on ID so this is the ID or variable so it could be one two three any number it doesn't matter well, because of mask.verse, this one, it will get that ID, okay, and save it over here. And after saving it, uh, we'll use another boolean over here, and we'll call it flag. And now here, we'll create a for loop, and uh, we'll use for loop i0, like uh, this one, mm, yes. But of course, we don't need this one. And over here, we don't need task len. Here we do len tasks. This one. So whatever the tasks we have, we'll look through it, and uh, then we'll see which ID matches with the ID already we have. Okay. So that's how. That's why, and that's how we are going to use the for loop. Okay. So we'll look through it and over here we do a conditional check if task ID now task ID for us okay I'll just manually print it over here now here okay so if we get the ID then we can compare uh, with the one we have here so here we have all these tasks which is uh, this one and here we'll look through them and then we'll see which one matches okay and then we'll do curly braces if there is a match then we'll return it okay so we'll just re return this uh, json encode information but of course here we want to return only one the one matches okay yeah so here we'd return but if you want to return actually you should use uh, break over here and uh, over here we would also set it to true now this one we are going to use if uh, there is an error okay all right if it's successful it is set to if it's false after this loop that means that it couldn't find it so that means there is an error okay so after this one over here we do conditional check if flag equal false which means it didn't go inside the loop that means there are errors over here okay now here we want to send another json response okay new encoder maps type will be to string the key is a string the value is a string as well returning a map and map has key value pair and that's what we know so the key is a string which is this one and the value is also string which is this one so here you mentioned the string type okay so let us go through this one more time 
So once this how, uh, route gets hit, because we would be sending a parameter, so over here, uh, it would catch that and put over here, and uh, then we'll look through all the tasks we have, and if certain ID matches, we'll just uh, over here do the JSON encoding of that certain task and break out of the loop. And with this, actually, it would return as well, okay? And it wouldn't go over here because this condition uh, would be true, right? So it wouldn't fall in this category. Now I will save it. I will cancel it and restart it again. Now over here, uh, the route is get task, right? So let's hit it, okay? And uh, most probably we have error. Let's check it. So we do have a get task. Let's come here. Mm, okay, so here actually we need to assign an ID. Okay, now let's cancel it and uh, run again. Okay, and we'll come over here. Yes, we get this one and we see the JSON format. Now we could do the same for task two, all right? Yes, yeah, so it means that we are returning task two over here and we see the JSON format. So our get request and uh, so over here, our get requests are pretty much all working. So if they're working right now, this is the time to go ahead and get the data in our Flutter application. I will move to our Flutter app <clears throat> and create endpoint all right okay so here we are right now and uh, in this slip folder I'll create another folder and uh, over here I'll call it services and uh, over here I'll create a new file and I'll call it service.dart okay now we'll create a service well in general in application mobile application service is used for retrieving data from the server and that's all it does only one thing it would just create a it will have a request a request would point to the server endpoint and then it would server would return a response and we'd get the response and give this response from service to other classes or other files okay here we would do class and here we call it data service and would extend uh, get connect and implements uh, getx service okay all right now in general with getx if you want to create http request you can do that in that case you need to use get connect here we'll first create a method and we'll call it get data and uh, this would return something what it would return it would return a response okay and the response would be future type okay all right now here uh, simply we need to return something okay first we'll create a response object and then we'll return it so here we'll say return response okay now the error should be gone all right so we need to send something that is uh, we need because we need to wait over here so that's why we would use async first and now over here uh, we need to get some data from server and then we put it here and then we return in that case the error should be gone right so here we we'll do await get okay all right now if you hover over on it you'll see it takes a URL and other parameters are all optional for example the header Okay, now here we'd use our URL, so we'll do HTTP and the local host, and our port is 208082, and then here we'll use get tasks. Okay, so that's our URL, so that would directly point to this one over here. So we are not really getting anything from our home page or home route, right? Okay. And then over here we'll send headers otherwise we'll just be dealing with the text object but we want to deal with JSON object okay so here we do content type 
content uh, type and application JSON. And I think we can also set the church set to UTF-8. Okay, well, with this, our first basic service is ready. So all we are doing, getting a response object from the server, and then we are returning that response object because it may take a little bit of time to get the response from the server. So we are returning a future over here. So if you want to return a future, definitely you should use await and async. All right. Now, after that, um, let's see, I think it should be here. Okay, great. Yeah. Anyway, so after that, here we'll create another folder and we'll call it controller. So all of our controllers would go there and here first we'll just call it data controller dot dart. Okay, we'll create a class and we'll call it data controller extends getx controller. Okay, well from here we'd be able to call this one okay all right so first over here we'll create a method and the method name would be as usual get data okay so this is more like our api file okay all right so over here we do get data it will call the object will in, in sorry will inside inside this will call this method okay now, to be able to do that, first we need to instantiate an object from this uh, data service, okay? So that's what we do. Data service, service, data service, okay? Now, over here, uh, we'll create a response object, response, response. Now here we we'll do service dot get data all right so that's all but now this should be this is returning a future so that's why here we need to use await okay now if you do await here then you also need a sync modifier here okay all right and uh, let's make it future but return is we are we will not return anything to we are doing a future over here to just to stay safe okay all right. Now over here at the top, we also need to create a variable bool, and we'll call it is loading equal false. Then we'll create a get getter for this, and it would be is loading is loading. Okay. Now when you hit this one, it starts to uh, when we call this one immediately. You, we will set it to true, which means it's loading, okay? All right, and then we'll check the response object. So, res, whatever we get, we'll check the body, okay? Uh, not really body, actually, status code. If it's equal 200, then it means that we have gotten the data. Okay, so here we'll create a list and uh, it would be dynamic type for now and uh, we'll call it my data and save it. Okay, now we want to get create a getter for this dynamic and get and we'll call it my data and my data. So this would be the list. In this list, we want to put all this variable, oh, sorry, all the information that we get after the status code, okay? So here, if it's uh, 200, that means that over here in this list, I can simply go ahead and put the response.body, okay? Whatever we get from the server, we put it inside this, okay? All right, and at the same time, for now, let's print a message. We got the data okay. 
here else print we didn't get any data all right okay yeah uh, but uh, whatever it is so over here if we get the data then we want to update our UI okay so whoever is calling this method because we have update method over here so the, whoever is calling this one would get the updated data that means that this list over here we can go ahead and use that because if it hits up to this part it means it has data and it was successfully able to put the data over here okay well now let's go ahead and find our main method which is this one okay now over here when we get our data when we run our app first time we want to load and uh, well we want to talk to the server and load the data okay so for this reason over here uh, let's go ahead and call okay let me let me uh, erase all of this we don't need okay so now we need to go ahead and uh, call this method and we'll see if it prints this one or not okay so over here uh, first we need to of course inject our controller which is this one right so this is the uh, controller that holds data and talks with the data service to get the data so this is our main controller and we need to inject it so let's go ahead and inject it here to inject it we'll use get lazy put this one and here would call data controller okay and that's all okay and after that we'll go ahead and uh, call this method okay so let's go ahead and do that so here we do get dot find we want to find a property of data controller Plus this one so here we'll call get data okay now most probably we need to do a wait and a sync all right mm, let's see okay I think we need to uh, move it out of this class so here just let me let us go ahead and create a method so here we'll call it load data And here we do async and now here you call load data okay all right so now let's go ahead and run our app and see how it's going okay now we do have a, a problem over here which is this one well if you click on this one well it takes it says that string is not subtype of uh, uh, this one now I don't think we have any problem here so let's go ahead and check our uh, end endpoint now this is the endpoint well here I do see that I'm missing JSON so it was not returning JSON okay so I'll restart it now you go ahead and print it you see it says we got the data 